Boiler Dan One channel, and I've been working on the Flying Dutchman. I want to give you an idea what this episode is going to cover. I have color coded the parts list. So I'll discuss that a little bit. That may be a little boring for some of you, but if you're a, a beginning modeler, it'll help quite a bit. Then I cut hundreds of planks for the deck. I'll talk about how to cut those straight and how to color the edges. And then I did some planking on uh, the two front lower decks. Turned out pretty good, I'm happy with that. I wanna mention that I started coppering a lot of the metal parts and I had a little bit of a setback. You have to make sure that the copper you buy is real copper and I'm talking about copper leafing. There's a lot out that is imitation copper and I had apparently had some of that in old stock and didn't realize it wasn't really copper. I've done quite a bit of copper leafing and I must have run through the actual copper and came across some uh, artificial copper and it will not it will not get the patina. So I had to strip it all off, so that set me back. So in episode three, I'll go back to the copper leaf and show you how I did that. Before I move forward, I'm gonna move backwards just a little bit. I wanna summarize something so the next part will make sense. You have two sets of papers. One is the building plan. It goes mostly alphabetical but in it, it also identifies your plan sheets. The other paper you have is the written instructions, just a couple of pages in dual language, and your parts list. The parts list is almost overwhelming. However, I have taken the time to figure it out. So now I'm gonna try and explain it. I'm gonna start as an example with the walnut because there's so few pieces. There's one segment that is two by four, and I believe that's probably in millimeters. So there's just two pieces, but you'll find it in several locations. So what I've done, I've gone through and the walnut that is two by four is used in several areas. C1, two, seven, G2, three, four, and five, J1, and V15. Now there is another area that says you need a two by three millimeter, there is no two by three in the kit. So it'll either have to be this or I'll have to, have to substitute something. This is what is used to do the ship's planking for the most part, but there are more places. So this is two millimeters by five millimeters. I'm not gonna go through these, but I've marked on here all the different letter combinations where these are used. So now I know when I look for something, I can look at the part number on here, find it, and use this. One thing you could consider doing is go through the parts list. And for example, here's the two by four, C1 and C2, and there's several of these. You could color code this with a marker and get different colored markers. So you could readily cross-reference it to these stacks. In other words, I could color code these also. I did go ahead and color code the loose pieces of wood and on my notes that says where I need each of these different pieces, uh, I just put a mark so I could tell what color. This is a little close. This is green, this is yellow. Other than those two, it's obvious which ones they are. So how I used this is I went into the parts list, which also gives me the size, and I put the corresponding color. So as an example, this piece here, I need I-5. So I go to the parts sheet, find I-5. See that it's purple. If I need the length, there's the length that I need. And go over here to find the purple. These are all those uh, width and thickness of wood. They're different lengths, so I'll have to cut it to size. But I think that will help. I hope that's clear. Um, I know it is going to work for me, but I don't know if it'll work for you or not. Another minor thing that I picked up on, if it's a 0, 0,6, that really means 0.6 millimeters as far as the thickness. On the other hand, if it's a 0 with a strikeout and a 6, 
that indicates it's a dowel rod. I have not sorted through the dowel rod yet, but it doesn't look like it's that tough of a job. I'm starting to work on the lower decks and get them planked. It does require that you cut them to size. The planks that I need for the deck are part B1. I will need 266 of them. They are 65 millimeters in length, however, with my color coding. Uh, this is quite a bit longer than that, so I need to cut them down to size. Cutting those planks by hand, I cannot get them exactly the same, so I use my saw. I picked this up at Harbor Freight. It wasn't very expensive. It's a two-inch benchtop cutoff saw. I have attached it to my uh, workspace. This is a straight edge for a table saw or a band saw, and it can be adjusted. I've attached it to the, my little uh, workbench here, and I've measured across and got the measurement that I need. I've taken a, a grouping of about 10, maybe nine, spaced the tape out so it doesn't change the angle of anything. And I've been cutting them, laying them in the vise vertically. And tighten this down. I can hold here for when it finishes the cut. I doubled this tape over here so that I can easily grab it. Take this off. And there they are, a consistent size. Here are my cut bundles. And one thing I, I did not mention, the very first cut I normally just cut off the very edge because sometimes they're not exactly straight in there. Now this time I got lucky and they were all straight, but it's just just a fraction of an inch to make sure that your uh, leading edge is all cut exactly the same. The instructions show taking a pencil and darkening the edges of these planks. I do it a little differently, so let me show you. First, you get a stack of them, kind of line them up there uh, on top of each other, just so you know. Then lay them on their edge so you get a flat edge. And then take some sort of a clamp. Turn this over. Instead of fighting with a pencil, I have a very wide magic marker, permanent marker, and I do them in black. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now you can see there's a slight dark edge when you put these together. And I prefer it over pencil. This is my first grouping. I need 266 of these. I don't think that's quite 266, but I'll cut the rest when I need them. I'm also going to pre-stain these so I don't have to worry about getting glue on them and not being able to stain them. Here's how I'm staining. I put a little bit of stain on this little piece of cloth, not a lot, and I rub it on one side, and I wanna rub it in. I don't wanna get it too heavy because I don't want this too dark. I want those black edges to show through. I do not stain the back side. That's gonna get glued down anyway, so it's less work for me to do it this way. I've planked what is part B2. The planks are referred to as B1. I have not cut out the uh, open spaces yet because I'm gonna wait till it dries. I just wanna mention how I did that. And the instructions do cover, it 
it's the same length as the planks. So you start out and it has you draw a line. You can measure it. I just use the plank to get to the, the lines. So there's uh, one here, one here. And then you're going to go in halves so that your seams are every other, if that makes sense. You can see it visually there. So I went ahead, I went ahead and put dotted lines at the halfway point so that when I came to this intersection, so the first plank would go on here, your next one, your next row is going to be the halfway point. So I could start the next one at this halfway point and then the next plank would go to the halfway point and the next would fill it in. There's some overhang, but that's how I did it. It's the same as what the instructions say with the exception of I put the halfway mark in as dotted lines. I wasn't clear a minute ago when I discussed starting this second segment of B2. You need to make sure that you're not matching. You're not going to duplicate this. You want to have the seams opposite. And in the video I showed, I actually used the, the long two and these two, the seams would match up. And that's not what you want. You want those individual boards to be staggered. Here are the first two sections that I made. They're not really in place. And I'm going to make a comment that all the kits have you glue these bones, as I call them, in place first. Well, then you tend to struggle getting all these in. You have to bend everything. I've done a couple models where I just put them in place, left them loose until I got these deck pieces in place. My next ship, I'm going to do that intentionally because this piece over here was a little tight to get in. I haven't even tried this one yet. After my complaint and I put effort into it, it was not that hard to get this in. So on this ship, apparently it's going to work out okay. These are just dry fitted in there. I have some other things I'm going to try, uh, but it gives you an idea of how that's going to look. And the two pieces do fit together and you really can't tell that there's a seam going right down the middle. So that will be good. I've got uh, four more segments to make. I'll do that and continue on. Before I get too far along, I've got to start getting electrical wiring in here and decide where and exactly how I'm going to put those lights in. That'll be it for part two. I'll keep working. I'll get that copper leafing situation straightened out and get that posted just as quick as I can. This is Boiler Dan Lund. As always, thanks for watching.